uh, somebody wanted to ask me to to explain myself uh, with regards to Psyche K on Netflix. Uh, and before I get to that specifically, I want to talk about uh, a much more general uh, difference between the Texas market and or, or the Dallas market and, and uh, the L.A. market, because mm -hmm. Dallas is largely a one shop town. Like most of the work, the vast majority of the work that is available to voiceover performers in Texas comes from Crunchyroll. Uh, and there are things about the way that Crunchyroll handles casting that I actually think that L.A. could stand to learn a thing or two. I, I really do believe that. Uh, but L.A. is a much different market because there are a lot of different employers that are, that are around. And, um, even for, even for a client like Netflix, Netflix works with like 10 or more different studios for all of their content. They don't produce anything in house. They hire different studios for different projects and they say, you're producing mm -hmm. this job. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I can't speak with a whole lot of authority on this because I haven't really touched that side of things in this industry all that much. But my understanding is that when it comes to anime in particular, their live action dubs, they're, they're a little bit more hands-on with, but their, their anime in particular, Netflix is often kind of hands off with how things are produced. Uh, and they, they leave a lot of decisions in the hands of the studio. Uh, some studios have a casting director who sends out auditions and then fields everything that goes through their studio and, and does things that way. Some studios, uh, do things a little closer to the crunchy roll style of things where they, the directors are a little bit more in control of things. Um, but, uh, there's one studio in particular that Netflix works with a lot, uh, who shall remain nameless. But one studio in particular that is very, very careful about their non-disclosures. Uh, and mm -hmm. they're not unjustified with that concern because Netflix is a major employer for them. And if Netflix feels like secrets are being divulged that shouldn't be, they can take mm -hmm. away their work. Yeah. Uh, but this studio in particular, oftentimes... If they send out auditions, they will change all of the names. All the character mm -hmm. names will be different. All yeah. anything, anything that's identifying about the project will be completely different. Uh, oftentimes, they don't send out auditions at all, and they cast off of some other sample that they've got on hand. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not at all uncommon for you to get a, a booking email that says, you've been booked in XY codename project. And no other information whatsoever. Just a code I've also name. received, yeah, I've received auditions with sides that have pictures of characters that already exist, like several of them, almost like a collage of a feel of the type of character. Yeah, from some other property entirely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Several different other properties. Several different. Yeah. Because they, they're, they're absolutely keeping everything under wraps. Right. And that absolutely. Yeah. They're is, very is tight lipped about yeah. things. And that's something that I wish mm -hmm. that we could take a page out of Crunchyroll's book and get these LA studios to stop being so careful about the secrets. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, and that's something that, something that sag after can help with, by the way, is the transparency thing. It's something yeah. we've obviously got room for improvement on, but yeah. it's something that hopefully we can get in these forthcoming negotiations. Uh, mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so there's, there's that, I mean, this studio also takes away actors cell phones when we walk into the studio we may not learn anything about what we're working on until we walk into the booth and we yep. no longer even have our phone available to us to look up mm -hmm. anything or contact your or agent contact, if you're nervous. Yeah, yeah contact anybody anything like that so yeah i, I just want to give that little bit of context that there is there's situations at play in la that are very unfortunate and i wish I'm I'm hoping that we can do things to to improve that, uh, but there there is stuff that comes up that is tricky. Uh, mm -hmm. One that I can talk about, and I'm I swear I'm getting to the psyche K thing. I promise. But there's a show that I can talk about that happened 
not that long ago, Spriggan. Uh, I ended up playing the the title or the lead role in that show on Netflix and okay. didn't find out until three or four sessions in to just a six episode miniseries. Uh, Ooh, okay. Didn't find out till three or four sessions in. Oh, this is based on a movie that happened a few years back and Chris Patton was the lead and they hired me. And I don't even know if the director knew that. And the director just kind of cast stuff the way that they saw fit. And, and I, I, I don't know mm-hmm. that, they, that they knew about the source material or anything like that. So it, it's really yeah. unfortunate that there's not a little bit more due diligence done there and, and, and yeah. uh, things aren't covered. And it's, it's hard for us as actors to advocate for each other in those situations because we're not informed enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, getting to the point of Psyche K. Psyche K, for those who, who maybe aren't aware, there was a, a dub for an anime called Psyche K, uh, or some, The Disastrous Life of Psyche K, I think is the full title. Anyway, uh, the first season was dubbed at Funimation in Dallas, and uh, Jerry Jewell played Psyche. Second season never got a dub. Funimation let the license lapse or something. I don't know. Somehow Netflix got a hold of the the rights for season three of the show. Uh, And it went to a studio in Los Angeles. This was in November 2019, just mere weeks into not even like like less than a month. Uh, into the lifespan of the Netflix dubbing agreement. So that had just come into to effect. And we were pre-pandemic. Uh, and this L.A. studio had the rights to produce a, a third season of Psyche K. And mm-hmm. they hired Chris Bevins to direct it. And he called me on the phone one night to say, hey, I'm working on this show. It was a thing at Funimation. It's gonna be done here in LA now he he told me that he had already talked to Jerry and let him know that this was happening uh and he had he was thinking of me for the lead so I did get a heads up with that particular show I don't know how many other cast members got a similar phone call if any uh I don't know if anybody else in the original cast got got a call from Chris or not, I will say that when I had that conversation with him, I, I asked him about the, the possibility of casting anybody from the original cast. Uh, and he, he said, like, I would love to be able to keep everybody, but I we can't do anything with anybody based that's not here in L.A. And... Like that was that was like a, a firm like we cannot do that, whether that came from Netflix or the studio or just sign of the times because things were different in November 2019. I don't know. Uh, but that was that was off the table. That was out of the cards, period and full stop. I want mm-hmm. to make it known that that is not something that's not a decision sag after made. At all. That's that was a decision that was made by either Netflix or or the studio or or maybe maybe by Bevins. I don't think so. Uh, but uh, yeah, not not SAG AFTRA's place to to say you can't use the original cast. They absolutely would have allowed that to happen. Um, they they wouldn't they wouldn't step in step in the way of that. Uh, and there's there's some new stuff coming in in the works that we've we've seen some some announcements of shows that Netflix has picked up recently that have existing casts that are from Texas and we're trying it's like the organizers like myself are trying to keep tabs on these things and we're reaching out ahead of time to fellow actors to kind of spread the word hey if you see auditions maybe let the studio know that there's an existing cast that they could use. Cause we don't mm-hmm. like, nobody likes to see when our peers get replaced for no good reason. Yeah. No, I've actively seen and heard conversations about this. Um, we're not going to obviously name any projects. Yeah. 
I'm certain I, I'm sure that many of you are have an idea of which ones we might be talking about. But right. we've actively I've I've been hearing and seeing these conversations saying we want to make sure that if we see this, we inform everybody and we all try to tr- try to find a respectful, respect yeah. it full, but strong boundary to remind that this already exists uh, with people who already exist that are just as available as we are. 